Hello, and today we're going to be talking about how to gauge your performance of your CPU uh, by looking at the numbers of the, uh, the part list. So the first couple of things is that it's really hard for most people to understand what all these numbers mean. Um, you know, you might just see the first numbers as an indicator and you're just kind of like, okay, uh, I kind of understand that part, but uh, what about all this kind of jargon over here? What, is, what does all this mean? What, what do these numbers mean? What does the, uh, the letters on the back of it mean? Um, so hopefully in this video, I can help you understand what those do, um, as well as kind of give you uh, indication on uh, you know, what you should buy and uh, you know, what you should look for in your next CPU or in your next computer. All right, so let's start off with the uh, the basics. Um, most people, it's kind of common knowledge. Um, I think most people are probably more familiar with Intel. Uh, I'm just using this uh, slideshow. Th these are actually just comparing uh, CPUs, but uh, it's a good slide just to kind of compare uh, CPUs to CPUs. Uh, so this is the Intel side, uh, and we've got everything from a Core i3 to a Core i9 up here. Um, and so they basically count by odds. Uh, they don't have a core i1, it just starts at core i3, uh, and then they count up to core i9. Uh, and performance goes up each tier. So if you start at a core i3 and go to a core i5, you're gonna have better performance from that core i5. Um, and same thing if you go from a core i5 to a core i7, the core i7 is gonna have better performance, and so on. Um, it's the same thing over here at Ryzen. So if you buy a Ryzen 3, uh, you know, a Ryzen 5 is going to have better performance than that. Uh, a Ryzen 5 higher up in that tier list is going to have better performance. Uh, you know, again, Ryzen 7 is going to have better performance than a Ryzen 5. Ryzen 9 is going to have better performance than a Ryzen 7. Pretty basic. Uh, I mean, I think most people can understand this, and that's why, you know, AMD and Intel put these numbers in front of there. Uh, you know, their parts just to make sure that uh, most people can kind of understand what's going on here. So let's get into a little bit more detail of uh, what these numbers mean. So in these, uh, this four digit number here, uh, which both Intel and AMD have, uh, the first symbol always indicates the generation the part is from. So if you would have a one here, that means it would be the first gen from AMD's Ryzen architecture. If you would have a two here, it would be from the second gen. Uh, but right now we are dealing with AMD Ryzen 3, so it's a third gen processor. And right now we've got an Core i9 9900K. This is a ninth generation processor. Pretty easy to understand. Um, now with AMD, uh, they only have three generations out right now. So, you know, getting a first generation chip isn't that bad. Uh, they still have pretty decent performance. Uh, getting a first gen Core i9 chip or a Core i7, sorry, they did not have i9s back then. If you got a first generation Core i7, it would not have very good performance compared to ninth generations later. Um, so Intel is also having a new generation come out this year. It's going to be the 10th generation. Um, that's going to make this front number a 10. It's not going to be a four digit number anymore. It's going to be a five digit number. It means the same thing. It's going to have a 10 and it's going to have three digits after that. Um, so instead of the Core i9 9900K, it have the Core 10 10900K. Uh, so the naming scheme is kind of weird. Uh, but again, those first digits indicate your generation and that's pretty significant. So if someone tries to sell you a Core i7 uh, and say, oh, it's the top of the line, uh, but it only has a three in the front of it tell them like hey, that's a crazy old processor You know, you're kind of you're kind of scamming me out here um, If you're looking at buying a new Intel processor, I'd say hey um, You know, I need at least a six gen processor um, That would mean that I have a six in the front of it uh, That's kind of when you know um, Performance kind of went up higher for Intel um, and that is three years after this one, four years after the launch of 10th gen, which are, you know, they're still pretty good processors. Uh, with AMD, again, you can go all the way back to first gen, uh, you know, they'll still be good processors. So after that, uh, let's get to the three digits at the back. Uh, and these things are probably the most confusing to most people. Um, the, the last three digits don't really indicate much except performance. So if you were just to look at a Ryzen 7 3800X, you would think that it 
has eight hundred in the back of it, so that's why it has eight cores. But that doesn't really make any sense because you have a thirty-seven hundred, so you know you also have eight cores and sixteen threads, and that just kind of breaks that whole entire logic. Same thing with the thirty-nine hundred X. It's got twelve cores, and nine is not really the same deal. And it's also the exact same over here with Intel. You've got ninety-nine hundred K and you've only got eight cores you don't have nine cores so you know those don't really correlate with any of the specs here um, basically what this just means is the kind of tiering in the product stack so if you have a 3200 it's fairly low in the product stack uh, if you have a 3700 it's pretty close to the highest in the product stack a 3900 uh, is almost the highest. There's actually one chip higher than the 3900, and that is the 3950X. Um, because it's just a higher digit means it's better than the product stack. Um, so that's fairly easy to understand, uh, but I also want to talk about the symbols, because this is something that a lot of people don't necessarily understand when it comes to buying a CPU. And the symbols on the back uh, for each company uh, vary. So if you were to buy a AMD chip, uh, you could see varying amounts of symbols on the back of your processors. Uh, what I mean by that is you have a 3900 and you have an X at the end of it. Um, they also make processors without the X. I mean, most of these have symbols on the back of them, but the Ryzen 5 3600 does not have an X or a G on the end of it. Uh, and what the X means is that it is a higher clocked variant of the original processor. So as we can see with the Ryzen 5 3600, uh, it has a base clock of 3.6 and it has a boost clock of 4.2. With the 3600, we have a base clock of 3.8 and a boost clock of 4.4. All that X does means that these clocks are higher than what the base version is. And this is just for AMD. Intel does not have an X at the end of theirs, so this is just for AMD. Do not cross these between each other. Um, now for AMD, the other symbol that they have on the back of their CPUs is the letter G. What G indicates is integrated graphics. As you can see here, the subtext says with Radeon RX Vega 11 graphics, Vega 8 graphics. So what the G indicates is that this CPU has graphics uh, integrated on it. Um, so you do not need a dedicated GPU in order to run this CPU and get video out. With all the rest of these, since they do not have a G at the end of them, you do need a dedicated GPU in order to get a video output. Alright, so let's move over to the Intel side. Alright, so let's move over to the Intel side. So the letters on the end of Intel um, vary, um, and there's more of them than there are on AMDs. Uh, and there's a little bit more subtleties to them than, again, on AMDs. AMDs are pretty simplistic. Um, there's only those two symbols. So let's just start with the Core i9-9900K. Um, so this is a KF variant. So what a K means for uh, an Intel CPU means that it has an unlocked multiplier. So what this means is you are able to overclock your CPU. Um, basically, you're able to take these clocks, which are basically how many times your CPU cycles uh, and does certain calculations, how fast it does them. Um, you can increase this to like 5.1 or 5.2. Uh, and the higher you go, the more performance you get. You do not get this option on a chip that does not have a K on the end of it. If you have an i5-9400, you can only go up to 4.1. You're not able to go any higher with this because you're not able to overclock. Uh, on the i7-9700K, you are able to overclock. On the Core i5-9600K, you are able to overclock. Uh, now, in the parentheses, there is a letter called F. Now, sometimes you will see a CPU just with the letter F on the end of it. Uh, now what F indicates is that there are no integrated graphics on the CPU. Most of the time Intel CPUs do come with some sort of integrated graphics, which is kind of the same thing as what AMD has. Uh, you are able to just plug in your CPU and then plug in an HDMI cord to your motherboard and get a video output without having to run a graphics card. If your Intel CPU 
has the letter F on the back of it, it means you do not have an integrated graphics chip. So if you have a Core i9 9400, that means you have integrated graphics. If you have a Core i5 9600KF, that means that you do not have integrated graphics and you will need to buy a GPU in order to get any sort of video output. All right guys, so hopefully that was fairly helpful uh, in being able to buy your CPUs. Now the cores and threads are going to change depending on the generation that you buy. So usually the newer the generation you buy, the higher the cores, threads, uh, the cache in the CPU, the more of these you get, the better the CPU will be. So you will want to buy a newer generation. So if you're buying Intel, uh, you know, buying a, uh, a eighth, ninth, or tenth gen CPU is going to give you, you know, up to these core counts. Same thing with AMD. If you buy a, uh, a second, third, or fourth gen CPU, you're going to have pretty close to these core count numbers. Um, if you go anything lower with Intel, you're not really going to get anything close to eight cores. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helped you guys out. Uh, hopefully you guys are more informed than what you're able to buy. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helped and I'll see you guys in the next one.